The mysteries of nature are as infinite as they are fascinating. Thousands of books have been written in an effort to explain these myths. And the man who can best explain them is, of course, our friend with the encyclopedic mind, Mr. John Kieran. Right now, Mr. Kieran is in his library with Paul Milford, his next door neighbor. Let's listen. John, there's uh, one subject we haven't touched on yet, and it's one that you're supposed to be quite famous for. Uh, you wouldn't mean birds, would you? I would mean birds. You haven't had anything interesting to tell us about birds? Well, uh, how about uh, two birds uh, fighting a sheep? I don't think that would be too interesting. It sounds like too much of an overman. Uh, you mean because it's two to one? Well, no, it's just that, uh, well, birds don't weigh very much, and uh, a sheep, well, that, that wouldn't work out too well. I don't think I'd be interested. Well, I know one parrot-like bird of Australia, the Kia, with a fierce bill that's said to kill sheep. But these are just two nice little birds. But they, uh, they win the fight against the sheep. Oh, I have to see this. You're on. But before we meet these birds, I'd like to introduce you to some friends of theirs and show you where they live. Every so often, I go down to the shore and walk where the league-long roller breaks upon the beach. Why? Well, it always seems to me there's something doing along the seashore. There, there's uh, life uh, in the air, there's life in the sea, and there's life along the beach, too. There are always sandpipers uh, skipping back and, and forward, feeding as the waves recede and retreating as the waves come in. In all the uh, waters of the world, you'll find gulls, gulls like these. In uh, our harbors, it's the herring gull. This is the first cousin of the herring gull. They're very friendly birds, they, they're scavengers, they help to keep our waters clean, and they follow ships for the food that the sailors or the passengers throw to them. Incidentally, the, the uh, adult birds are the ones with the white heads and white tails. It takes these gulls about three years to get their uh, grown-up suit of clothes. The young ones are brown and mottled. Oh, these are shelled ducks, S-H-E-L-D. They're very handsome, and in the springtime, their courtship is something to see and hear. So in order to uh, hear it as well as see it, we've uh, hidden a, a microphone here. And they have a very odd way of uh, display in the spring. Now, we'll just uh, listen to it and watch it. male that bobs it, its head and uh, utters that croaking sound. They gather in groups and look each other over and uh, one male drives off another. But finally, after having considered the matter duly, they begin to pair off. That's the female on the right. Well, now our pair take off to find a nesting site. Now, here we are near the nesting site. That's the male. He's on guard and he doesn't like the looks of us. And here's the female coming off her hidden nest in slow motion. Here's a close-up uh, look at her eggs and nest. Notice the down in there. Here's another bird that nests along the beach. That's a plover, one of the many species of plover. They're generally pretty good whistlers. Just make a little hollow in the sand, lay the eggs, and sit on them. That's the life of the plover. Oh, these are oyster catchers. And they have a remarkable courtship in the spring, too. Now watch them when they uh, come in and start their uh, song and dance. It's uh, really something to hear and see.
And this is the nest with a lot of little shells thrown around. And here's the mother oyster catcher. And the male is on guard, you'll notice. Now the eggs are about to hatch and we put a microphone there so that we can hear and see a young oyster catcher working its way out of the shell. Now, as soon as these birds uh, dry uh, off, they can uh, run away from the nest and follow their mother. Doesn't take long before they're on their way. Here's our young oyster catcher, only a few hours old. There's a balancing feat for you. So its mother takes it along and shows it what to eat and how to get it. Just watch this uh, domestic lesson. This is a game bird flying in. It's a first cousin to our yellow legs. This is called a red shank. And here's its nest hidden in the grass. There are four eggs. And there's the mother. And notice how much she looks like the grass when she nestles down on the nest. That's for protection. Here's a really handsome bird with a turned up nose, too. This is an Avocet, A-V-O-C-E-T. Really striking pattern. It's the nesting time with the Avocets, too. They have a little parade first. on all sorts of small marine life that they find along the shore. Oh, here's the nest, and it's in a meadow right close by the sea. Again, it's a very simple nest, just a hollow, and the mother settles down on it. Uh-oh, there are some uh, sheep that are pastured nearby. And one of them is wandering near the uh, nest of the avocets there, alarmed by it. See, the male is coming to the rescue, too. Uh-oh, now there's one. Of course, the sheep doesn't mean any harm, but uh, if it stepped on the nest, it would crush the eggs, and that would ruin the avocet family. Here's a bigger one, and more stubborn, too. Well, the avocets are outweighed, but they're in there fighting. They're going to herd that sheep away from the nest at all costs. Pretty brave of those birds to tackle an animal of that size. Well, finally, they have warded it off. And the mother settles back on her nest. All's well. And within a few weeks, 
the young avocets will be feeding with their proud parents where the sea floods up to meet the land. And that's tonight's story, Paul. As Hamlet says, there are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in thy philosophy. And thanks to the miracles of science, we human beings are getting closer and closer towards solving the great riddle of the universe. And these things are more exciting than an Edgar Allan Poe mystery. Well, I think they are, John. But for me, you make them much more interesting than Mr. Poe.